If you found this video, you are likely looking to find a method that will help you run more and run longer while avoiding injury. Maybe you're new to running and looking for a protocol that will help you start running safely. Or maybe you're a veteran runner but are stuck in a plateau and looking to improve your race times. No matter what kind of runner you are and what your goals are, the math method has you covered, promising to make you a faster runner who will be able to handle running more miles and not get injured. Sounds perfect, right? The popularity of this training methodology is undeniable, with tons and tons of YouTube channels and podcasts praising the seemingly long list of benefits derived from math training. I was curious about this myself, and last year I went through a little bit of a slump and missed my goals in all of my races. I was ready for a change. Could this truly be the training shift I needed to abide by to turn the tide? As I have a very inquisitive nature, I turned to Uncle Google and asked what the scientific literature says about the Maffetone method. Hear me out, because I think you will be surprised to hear what I found out. First, let's explain what the Maffeton method is. The Maffeton method, or math method for short, is heart rate training designed to keep you within your aerobic threshold. It was designed by Dr. Phil Maffetone and claims you should run within your maximum aerobic function HR, which is calculated with the following formula, 180 minus your age. For example, if you are 30 years old and have good health and fitness, your maximal aerobic heart rate will be 180 minus 30 equals 150 beats per minute. There are some adjustments you can make to this formula based on if you get sick often, have been injured recently, or have hit up a plateau, which will bring that number down. Also, I think it's important to mention the formula only takes into account age and does not account for sex differences or weight and build, for example. Since the average adult male heart rate is in between 70 and 72 beats per minute, while the average for adult women is between 78 and 82 beats, there would seem to be a flaw in this formula. By the way, this 10 beat difference is totally normal and accounted for by the size of the heart, which is typically smaller in females than males. Following this, a 140 pound male will have a slower heart rate than a 200 pound male, again accounted for by the fact that one is larger than the other. But more on this later. So why does Dr. Maffetone insist on keeping your heart rate below this 180 minus your age formula? Quoting Dr. Phil Maffetone's website, this Math 180 formula enables athletes to find the ideal maximum aerobic heart rate in which to base all aerobic training. When exceeded, this number indicates a rapid transition towards anaerobic work. And here we need to define what aerobic work is versus anaerobic work. The American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM for short, defines aerobic exercise as, quote, any activity that uses large muscle groups can be maintained continuously and is rhythmic in nature, unquote. No mention to heart rate here. In contrast, anaerobic exercise has been defined by the ACSM as, quote, intense physical activity of very short duration fueled by the energy sources within the contracting muscles and independent of the use of inhaled oxygen as an energy source." Unquote. To simplify, aerobic means with oxygen, while anaerobic means without oxygen. And now let's go back to Dr. Maffetone's quotes and apply his formula to me personally. I am 50. Hence, 180 minus 50 equals 130. If my maximum aerobic function HR is 130 and anything over 130 beats per minute has me tapping into my anaerobic system, I should only be able to run over 130 in very short intervals, right? Joel, how long can a person exercise in the absence of oxygen? 
Well, I'm gonna go back to my most recent data. In January 2024, I ran the Disney Marathon in 4 hours 47 minutes. I think we'd all agree this is not a short effort. Evidently, my HR was under 130 all that time, correct? Well, no. My heart rate was on average 160 beats per minute, which again, according to Dr. Maffetone, puts me well into anaerobic or in excess of oxygen. Okay, but enough about using myself as an example. Surely there are some studies somewhere that prove the Maffetone method works, right? For this, we're turning again to Google. Now I gotta be honest, I didn't find the bazillion amount of articles and research that I was expecting other than many white papers from Dr. Maffetone himself on his website. And I feel like at this point, we also should define what a white paper is. According to merriamwebster.com, a white paper is a quote, detailed or authoritative article. Okay, now, the level of detail contained in said white paper might be a lot of detail, might be lacking detail, or it may even contain bias. We don't know. It's not scientific. But what about scientific research? For sure, there has to be some scientific research that proves the math method works, right? Well, I did find a research paper within the National Library of Medicine titled, quote, Maximum Aerobic Function, Clinical Relevance, Physiological Underpinnings, and Practical Application. Unquote. And it's co-authored by Dr. Maffeton himself with Paul B. Lorsten. Now, usually in scientific literature, there are two very important pieces of information that are offered. Number one, who funded the research? More on this later. And number two, which subjects participated in the study with mentions to sex, age, ethnicity, data, etc. of said subjects participating in the study. What about this research? From the get-go, we should learn this through a data availability statement. Specifically in this one we know, the raw data supporting the conclusions of this article will be made available by the authors without undue reservation to any qualified researcher. Okay, so I guess unless we write Dr. Maffetone himself, we're not going to learn who they studied. But let's continue reading. The author states, quote, our central aim is to present clinically relevant research findings, practical applications directed at helping individuals increase fat oxidation and encourage new research on this topic. Unquote. This is a very fair goal, or so it seems to me. So let's continue. So what the authors did was study 223 male and female runners who were uninjured and instructed them to run within their math HR for a time of three to six months. We're not told why some only follow this protocol after six months while others discontinued at the three month mark. We're also not told how long these runners had been practicing the sport of running. What we do know, reading further, is that all of them proceeded to run a 5k race on a certified course. Of those 213, 170 improved their race times. That's a whopping 79.8%. Pretty impressive. And really, that is that for the study, guys. After this introduction that truly opened up an appetite and made me hungry for more, all the other examples given are individual. Like this one of a 35-year-old experienced runner who, after running 12 months exclusively under his math threshold, was able to improve his 5K time. Now, 5K results are not easily extrapolated to a marathon, for example. Surely, we're going to be given more information about math training specifically for long distance, right? Okay, let's keep reading. It sure is coming. Oh, but it's not. The rest of the paper analyzes how fat oxidation affects health and is improved by running at a lower heart rate and mentions other studies that prove this to be true. Only when you click on those links, none of those studies utilize the math 180 minus your age formula but more of a traditional five heart rate zone approach with zone two training mixed in with some high intensity training. Then this research article continues by citing other studies that dig deeper around fat oxidation and how to become a fat adapted athlete, which is something that has been quite trendy in the last few years and math training claims to help you become. So after all this, 
I'm left a little bit blah about the whole thing, but I'm willing to get to the bottom of it. So I take a look at Bill Maffetone's own website. And here's where I'm even more surprised. Visiting Dr. Maffetone's website, I now realize the math method is a lifestyle that was devised by Dr. Maffetone based on 40 years of clinical and scientific research that will help walkers, runners, cyclists, and elite athletes of all ages and ability to reach their full human potential. I mean, all of these sounds a little bit cultish like to me. Look at all the things that MAP method will do for you. Burning fat for fuel, increase energy and endurance, run faster for longer, prevent injury and disease, improve your brain function, give you better health and fitness. And by the way, the method comes with a complete overhaul of your diet, including an approved foods list that seems extremely restrictive. Recipe books you can buy, etc. He also sells his own supplements and offers a collection of master classes and e-learning modules available for about 500 bucks each. I mean, with all these claims to longevity and health, this is really a tall order. Now, I'm not disputing that the key to longevity is improving your aerobic function. That has been proven by scientific studies, including the ones Dr. Maffetone cites. However, in his very own research, he proves his point only for the 5K distance and with athletes that only followed his methodology for a length of three to six months. And we are not offered an explanation as to why these athletes stopped using math. And the only instance of a 12 month long study is done in a 35 year old one. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that there was a very important piece of information that needed to be accounted for in any scientific study, which is that of conflict of interest slash funding. When we scroll down in this research publication, we can see that the research done on 213 athletes one from the beginning where people run a 5k was funded by PM. PM is the owner of filmmaffetone.com. In other words, Phil Maffetone funded research that proved his point that 180 minus your age should be used when exercises aerobically but did so in a very limited manner. No one's debating that most of your miles should be done at a very easy pace. But subscribing to an arbitrarily strict formula that doesn't even account for sex differences or size differences just doesn't seem fair. And I'm not even going to get into the whole diatribe of authorized foods versus non-authorized foods and hyped and expensive vitamin protocols. Okay, so now let me know in the comments below what you think about the Maffetone method. If you have used it and share your feedback in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Run fearless.